Alright, so after months without any news about Splatoon 3, we finally seem to get a lot more info. Two weeks ago, out of nowhere, Nintendo uploaded almost 4 minutes of pure gameplay, and also was kind enough to share the release date of the game, which made all Splatoon fans, myself included of course, collectively lose their minds. However, as always, not everyone was content with what Nintendo showed them, and a lot of people went ahead to do the same comment as usual. Splatoon is just Nintendo's Call of Duty. It looks exactly like Splatoon 2, or there's nothing new, this could have just been in a free update. So, as someone who played Splatoon 1 for a fair amount, and now plays competitively in Splatoon 2 at pretty much the highest level, I wanted to comment on those remarks on the current state of Splatoon 3. From my understanding, it's fair to say that there are two causes for the skeptical attitudes towards Splatoon 3. The first one is easily the rush state of Splatoon 2 at the game's release. Splatoon 2 released only two years after Splatoon 1 debuted on the Wii U, Nintendo's worst selling console, and was selling surprisingly well. Splatoon 2 marked Splatoon's ascending from just a new IP to one of Nintendo's top four, but the state of Splatoon 2 at launch could very easily be viewed as Splatoon 1.5. The biggest mistake Nintendo did when releasing Splatoon 2 was making it seem like almost a downgrade from Splatoon 1. Less weapons, half the maps, and pretty much the exact same story mode as its predecessor made Splatoon 2 not incredibly appealing towards many who already played the first game on the Wii U. Nowadays, I find it very unreasonable to still dismiss Splatoon 2 as Splatoon 1.5. Splatoon 2 received tons of mostly free new content, which made it much more of a contrast to its two-year older brother. New weapons, new weapon classes, new sub-weapons, new special weapons, dozens of new maps, a new ranking system, a new ranked mode, a new horde mode, and tons of other small changes made Splatoon 2 a worthy successor to Splatoon 1. Yes, you still shoot paint and can swim in it, so the core gameplay mechanics are the same. But that's what you want a sequel to be, right? Take the well-working formula of your first game and then further improve on it. In my opinion, that's exactly what Splatoon 2 did. Many things were enhanced and they took a different approach to balancing the game. But now that I've explained why I think Splatoon 2 eventually proved to be a proper sequel, it's time to ask the question whether Splatoon 3 has already shown to be what its name suggests, a worthy sequel, or if everything we've seen so far could have been implemented through more free updates as Splatoon 3 is just another way of Nintendo ripping their fans off. First off, let's talk about the debate whether it's warranted that Splatoon gets two games on the same console. From my perspective, as someone who has played Splatoon 2 for thousands of hours at this point, I very much would do anything to get my hands on a new game. Of course players who only have a couple hundred hours or less playtime in Splatoon might disagree on this point, because they still feel like they have things to do or accomplish, but people who still play the game to this day, like myself, five years after its release, they have gotten to the highest ranks, made all their gear, finished the story campaigns multiple times probably, maybe even played in tournaments like I do, and are slowly but surely growing tired of playing the same maps and modes that they already know by heart every day. I dare to say that after 5 years, even the most hardcore fans are rightfully feeling a little less motivated to play the game they love. I do want Splatoon to run smoother or on a better console, but at this point if Nintendo doesn't release an upgraded version of the Switch, a 5 year old console, I don't care too much. Or well, let me rephrase that, I don't care too much if the software, so in this case Splatoon 3, does run smoothly and looks at least as good as Splatoon 2, since big jumps in graphics are unlikely because they are on the same console. I don't want to defend Nintendo in any way, but for games like Splatoon, as long as everything runs smoothly, I don't need it to be 4K or have RTX lighting. Of course that would be extremely cool, but I won't judge the game only by its graphics, and call Splatoon 2.5 simply because it doesn't run at twice the resolution of Splatoon 2. Alright, we've talked about the first of Nintendo's biggest weaknesses, the hardware and graphics, but let's address the true elephant in the room, Splatoon's online system. To summarize it, most of Nintendo's online games use a peer-to-peer -peer connection system instead of the normal client service system. If you want to know what both these things mean, I recommend you just google it real quick, but most of 
you who play Splatoon will know that the online isn't very stable and very often laggy and sometimes even gives the players with worse connection an advantage. I and many others explained the difference between the peer-to-peer -peer and a client server online structure in previous videos and also explained the concept of the game's tick rate, the amount of times in which data gets updated each second. This one is the most important aspect to make for a good online experience. But going from Splatoon 1 to Splatoon 2, Nintendo did what no one thought they could do. They made it worse. Tick rate of Splatoon 2 is lower than the first games on the Wii U, and all in all it's just obvious that playing a game like Splatoon in a competitive way is often very frustrating, because of the god-awful online performance. Do I have high hopes that Nintendo will change Splatoon 3's online code, implement servers and increase the game's tick rate? Absolutely not. It's, it's just still Nintendo after all. But do I think that this is the single most important point about Splatoon 3 that decides whether it will be a fun game and have enough content in it to make the fans happy? No, at least not completely. For me, as well as for many others, the online system clearly has an impact on our enjoyment of the game, but we've still played it for hundreds and thousands of hours anyway, despite its flaws. And in that regard, even, even if Splatoon 3 looks not incredibly different than Splatoon 2, and has the same shady online, it's not fair to call this Splatoon 2.5 only based on those two criteria. Okay, now we talked about graphics and online. Let's talk about what we've actually seen so far. We've seen two new maps, one returning map from Splatoon 1, a new story mode campaign, at least seven new specials, we know that all weapons will return, and there's a new weapon class in the bows, and Salmon Run has been reworked quite a bit. So, considering all that, I don't think it's fair to call Splatoon 3 Splatoon 2.5, or even Splatoon 1.5. Splatoon has changed dramatically from Splatoon 1 to Splatoon 2, and will evolve again in Splatoon 3. But that's just my opinion. I hope you enjoyed this little monologue of mine, and I'd like to hear what you think about this argument. Do you think that nothing changed, and if so, why? Do you like the new approach Splatoon 3 seems to take to be different than its predecessors? What would Splatoon 3 have to show in order to justify its existence in your opinion? Thanks for watching, make sure to leave feedback if you enjoyed this video, and if you by coincidence speak German, Servus, also make sure to check out my German channel where I upload and stream Splatoon stuff, but German. Thanks for watching, see you soon.